Hello and welcome to today's video. Our videos are not a diagnosis. We are simply speaking our opinions, not factual statements. Am I a narcissist? Today we are diving back into the Amberverse, and we will see that Amber thinks hypnagogic hallucinations is something only she does, and therefore she is special. She then shows off her hernia and parades it in front of the camera, and later blames her no longer wearing the black pants as much as the cause to her hernia. Delusion. Because Amber abuses the copyright system, clips will be heavily edited. So let's get into it. Okay, so hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to a new vlog. My hair is super frizzy right now. And why don't you ever brush your hair? Uh, I know that I like to point out my flaws. I guess I wanted to take control of the situation. But, you know, look at Twinkie right here. Oh my god. Oh, she's perfect. So, me and Feline no one cares! were just talking about, like, sleep paralysis, where it's only happened to me once. And one time it happened to her so bad that she like passed out. Ah, ah. So for me, it was it was actually while living in this apartment, which is crazy. Why is that crazy? Um, it was when we slept in the other room. It was a little bit, um, it was while I was living by myself. For that whole day or two. It was like after my last relationship. Jade moved in before Becky moved out. So it must have been during the time Becky was isolating at another household. And Jade had moved in before Becky had even finished isolating. So those whole few microseconds of being alone. I remember laying there, like I woke up and like I physically couldn't move. And then I felt something like tickle my finger. A ghost. Like it literally felt like someone was tickling my finger, but I was by myself. And it freaked me out so bad, but like I remember instantly falling asleep. So freaked out she fell straight back to sleep. Impressive. I have always hallucinated in my sleep. You were dreaming. Like this has been going on since I was like four years old. I still remember the first time it happened. Um, I imagine like a hallucinated like a green purse and from that point on I would say like once a month I'll wake up in the middle of the night and there'll be like a cool design on the ceiling or like a huge spider you're only dreaming or like a skeleton like sometimes some scary stuff but nine times out of ten it's usually like a really cool design like moving coral this is just the in-between stage of sleeping to waking up it's just a crossover and a manner of dreaming Hypnopompic hallucinations occur while a person is waking up, and hypnagogic hallucinations occur while falling asleep. In 86% of cases, hypnopompic hallucinations are visual. They often involve seeing moving shapes and colors, or images of animals or people. Like, what does that make? Like, does what does that mean? Like, if that's not normal? She likes to be unique. <laughs> well, is like sleep paralysis technically the same thing? But I'm not, I don't feel par- I mean, I don't try to move when it happens. I just, oh, whoops, I woke up for a second and there's a big spider on the wall. I know what that means. Well, you said you try to grab the purse. But I do remember, like, the, the hardest one for me, for some reason, like, even though it's something that, like, happens frequently, it was when I was living in Virginia. It was like, the spider was as big as the ceiling. And I remember I hopped up so fast. Sure, Jan. And the person I was in bed with was like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I was like, oh my God, get the spider. And then they were like, there's nothing there. And I was like, oh, sorry, I was hallucinating. She is unique. What are you doing? Aww. She's jealous because I was petting this one. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to lay on my stomach. And now this one's jealous. Y'all just stay jealous. Why? Because you are so special. She likes to be unique. <laughs> okay, I know this is weird. Expect nothing less. But I want to show you guys where my hernia is. So, always plucking at her clothes. So, it's like right here. When I lay down, um, it just gets a little bulge. You don't notice it when I'm standing. I disagree. I feel like I can see it. Anyone else? This is how I've always looked. That's a lob. But then when I like lay flat, like pretty, pretty flat and like kind of arch my back back a little bit. Uh, you see the bulge, so that's unfortunate. That's putting it mildly. And some people were asking about the actual test for it. I don't know if you guys remember how I had to do like a bunch of tests before I got approved for weight loss surgery. Well, one of them was to get my GI checked. That was just, you know, that was when I had to fake cough, fake poop. See, there you go getting in the TMI territory again. You know, they were looking at my stomach, my intestines, anything around that region. That's what that was for. Um, I wasn't showing signs of a hernia at the time. Speculation. And that's how they found it. 
Um, so people were asking about that. So It never fails to baffle me how Amber always seems gleeful at a new negative diagnosis. Those with narcissistic personality disorder are known to use a bad diagnosis in their favor. They use it to portray a victim mentality, to help gain sympathy from those around them. Rather than question their own actions which may have played a part in the diagnosis, they instead ponder how they can use it to their advantage. I just woke up a little bit ago. It's pretty obvious. Today I'm actually using um, a large portion of it to write the paper my therapist wants me to. So please feel free not to share everything with me. Um, I think we're gonna stay in PJs for a little bit. Sometimes I have like a little PJ day. Rule one. There will be no more going to pajama parties. Aww. Like I always switch on and off, like shower in the morning or shower at night, shower in the morning or shower at night, or do both. <laughs> Let me go work on that paper. Ugh, I'm dreading it. I think people should keep private things private. Okay, so update. I have been doing it for about an hour, and so far I have written one, two, three, and I am on my fourth page. All right, now I'm taking a little break. Don't work too hard. I am having some pork chop, a serving of pasta, some zucchini. Are my eyes playing tricks on me, or is that a plastic fork and a paper plate? What the hell? Feline made it. Of course she did. So after I eat, I'm gonna continue this. Keep it to yourself. I have a rarity over here. Yes. You can. Okay, that was weird. Okay, so really quickly, let's talk about my hernia. There's that joyful smirk back again. So as you guys know, I had an invasive surgery. I had a full hysterectomy. The incision was 21 inches long. Um, it was an extreme surgery for someone like me. Coral, it's an extreme surgery for any woman. When you get a hysterectomy, your muscles around that area become weak. I'm also moving more now. <laughs> I do more compared to what I used to do. I used to be like sedentary. Sedentary. I, I don't know how to say really anything. Like to the extreme, like 24 seven, just like doing nothing. Yeah, so what's changed? And I've noticed now I'm not that way. Like you guys see me sitting a lot just because it's easier for me to film that way. Like, hi. Sure, Jan. I move a lot more now. I don't wear uh, my black pants as much. So my black pants, I do wear them when I go in public because they're, you know, comfy and they suction me up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, wear. So they hold a lot. I wear them like high up, uh, like up to here. <laughs> this is probably TMI. TMI. So they do hold my stomach up very well, actually. In what world do you live in? So the mixture between hysterectomy, which causes hernias, weak muscles around that area, which causes hernias, my weight, which causes hernias, holding that weight around, which causes hernias. Well, thank you, Ooh. Captain Obvious. And having my weight droop down a lot because I wear a lot of maxi dresses now. It's just what I choose to do. So I'm not holding that anymore. What? I'm up moving more, doing things. Um, as you guys know, I've been exercising. I shared that with you guys. I believe you, but thousands wouldn't. Um, just a lot of different things is what caused this hernia. Coral, I'm sorry, but your black pants would not prevent you from getting a hernia. The sheer weight of your stomach cannot be saved by those pants. You're reaching now. I'm definitely not like making excuses or whatever, but hernias are just very common. Like I'm 32 years old. I'm not making excuses or whatever, but but. Coral, that's exactly what an excuse is. It's a but, especially after you just listed off excuses. And yes, hernias are common, but not half as common as you seem to think. Just because other people can have the same problem, it doesn't mean it is okay. And to pass it off because you are 32 years old is alarming to hear. That is a young age, and most definitely not a stage where health should be rapidly declining. 
Also, although hernias can happen to anyone at any age, they are most common in elderly men, the average being 75 years and up. Sure a young woman can have one, but it isn't something to be palmed off as normal because you are in your early 30s. I, I really wish that I would have been called and told. They are your results and your responsibility to collect. If they do not call with results, you chase up the answer. It's just a part of being an adult. But you wouldn't know anything about that. Let's take a look at some of the comments on Amber's video before we leave the situation type deal. Her eyes are literally shining while she tells us about a new ailment. She's smiling, almost giddy with glee. While talking about a hernia, hysterectomy and health deteriorating at her age like it's the most normal thing in the world for a 32-year-old. Stop using age as an excuse. You're not old. You're only 32. It must be exhausting being in your head every day. You either want something to be wrong with you or you find a way to be so different from everyone else. So within the last few videos we got three new quirky personality traits. Diagnosed PTSD, a hernia, and hypnagogic hallucinations. She is so special, I wonder what's next. Thanks for watching our channel. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, stay safe.